Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be Rude, Immature, and Difficult Women. So I've got two emails I'm going to go through with you today, obviously on this particular topic, because both these guys, they obviously really like these women that they're involved with, or I should say were involved with, but they're kind of ignoring the fact that they're acting immature, they're kind of being passive aggressive, they're being rude, they're being difficult, they're ghosting them, leading their texts on read. And when you, what's interesting is like, you know, as I learned back way back in the day, as I talked about in my first book, 3% Man, when I didn't know any better, if I really liked a girl and I would see this kind of behavior, I would dismiss it because I liked her so much and thought, hey, well, nobody's perfect. But the reality is no one will ever do or say anything to you that you don't invite them to do. And if you don't perceive yourself as being valuable and a catch and bringing a lot to the table, then when you get this kind of behavior, you tend to dismiss it and ignore it. And the thing that really makes it difficult when you stay involved with these kind of women, or if you're a woman, stay involved with these kind of guys, is that it typically doesn't get any better. And it's just because this is how they learn to communicate and interact with other people, obviously in a dysfunctional way, in the families that they grew up in. And if you're at a place in your life like I am where I really like to have peace, ease, delight, effortlessness, people that are easygoing, easy to get along with, they don't get butthurt and expect me to deal with their neuroses, like you just don't want to put up with that kind of stuff whereas you know, obviously I used to put up with quite a bit of it when I was younger even in my professional life which I wrote about in my second book Mastering Yourself the I had a business partnership for the better part of a decade and there was a lot of toxicity and a, a lot of bullshit that went on between myself and my old business partners that just was unnecessary but because we we're all making good money together we had a good business and a lot of people depended on us. We just kind of put up with it and kind of tolerated each other, I guess, if you will. But the idea is that the more you allow this in any area of your life, the more you're going to attract other people that are going to kind of treat you the same way. And it's just not pleasant because it creates unnecessary drama. Whereas if you find somebody that comes from a good background, now it doesn't mean in all cases, 100% of the cases, if somebody comes from a dysfunctional background, that they're not going to be overcome that, that they're not going to be able to do the work on themselves, whether it's self-help or personal growth or maybe some kind of therapy where they recognize they've got flaws and they seek to become better people. It's just the reality is the majority of the people you're going to encounter just simply won't do the work necessary on themselves. So I have a quote that I wrote, and then we're going to jump into the first guy's email because there's just some good things that the behavior that you spot that's just kind of, you just shouldn't be putting up with it at all. It's just not worth it because you put up with it and you tolerate it six months, a year down the road. It's like it just continues to rear its ugly head. And you may have heard me say before that people don't change who they are. They may become a better version of themselves. So the quote says, good communication is essential for all healthy relationships. A person who grows up in a healthy family with parents who have a good relationship and who communicate like adults is extremely rare. They treat others with respect and won't tolerate disrespect. The more drama and dysfunctional behavior they witness and experience growing up is what they become emotionally anchored to expect and dish out themselves. You must set and enforce healthy boundaries with all people who you allow into your inner circle. This is how you create and maintain drama-free and effortless relationships. Never tolerate toxic people or those who take you for granted or you will attract even more of this behavior into your life. So it's interesting as I was, you know, come going through these emails and coming up with what I wanted to discuss today. It just kind of brought back some memories of some, uh, you know, I had a guy that I used to hang out with a couple years ago at, back down when I was living in South Beach. He was a lot of fun to hang out with and he was in real estate 
And if you made an appointment, a business appointment with him, he was always on time. But if you were hanging out with him personally, he might show up two or three hours late. Just a lot of flaky behavior. And sometimes he wouldn't show up at all. Sometimes he would call and make plans and then not even show up to the plans that he made with some kind of last minute BS excuse. And then when you called him out on it, he would get kind of pissed off at it. And then uh, about a little over a year ago, a buddy of mine who actually I met through this same guy who who've actually become good friends over the last several years, we had plans to get together to watch football games. This was last last football season. Same thing. It's like our late, we're like, where you at, dude? We're here at the restaurant. You want us to order something for you? Oh, you know, just giving us an excuse. And then he got pissed off, sent a nasty message, and then later on showed up that night just in a dickhead move and kind of pissy and and i broke his balls about it he got pissed off and fucking left and i was like like dude this was your idea to get together so needless to say i don't don't, you know we just stopped talking to that guy a year ago and it's like sometimes you have to do that it's kind of funny this past week i had a couple guys that i used to hang out with a lot when i was in high school and it's like every couple of years every year year and a half you're like hey let's get together let's do this let's do that and Something always comes up at the last fucking minute. And we were supposed to get together last week. And same thing. Right at the last minute, they kind of flaked out. And I was like, this is your idea to get together. I was, I was like, you know, after the second or third time that's happened over the last several years, it's like, I just went ahead and blocked their numbers because it's like, what's the point? Why won't I put up with that bullshit? I gave him a chance. Drama-free zone, baby. just the drink of the drama free life but it's like you know you know somebody for multiple decades and they just can't get their shit together and like i was saying earlier is that people don't change who they are they may become a better version of themselves but just some people are flakes same thing with women some of the women i've dated or are just like this they cause problems they don't call you back on purpose they get mad at you and then instead of calling you and telling you that they're upset and they want to talk they just give you the silent treatment. And then when you haven't heard from them in a couple of days, when they're used to calling and texting you two, three times a day, then you recognize, oh, okay, she's upset about something. Let me give her a call, see what it is. And it's like you, you put up with that for several years, and it's like it never really gets any better. There's always something new, that some new ripple or wrinkle in the story, and it creates drama. It creates a problem. It's like when you care about somebody or like in you know a couple of examples I gave when you're friends with people and you've known them for multiple decades and they just keep dicking you around and they think it's okay when it's like they're the one. It's like, hey, I gave you enough chances. It's like why would I want to keep an evening open when you're going to pull that bullshit? That's the second or third time. It's like, hey, three strikes, you're fucking out of here. So – it's hard when you, especially if some of these people are close to you or their family or you grew up with them. It's like sometimes you just got to cut people off. Sometimes people are just too toxic and they can't get their shit together. And when you tolerate this, you're literally telling the universe, hey, send me more of this behavior. Send me more people that will treat me this way. Send me more girls to date that are like this if you date these kind of women like these guys are involved with. Because this kind of bad behavior should just... It should disqualify them right away. So let's go through the first guy's email. Well, actually, did I even... I can't remember if I... No, I didn't read the quote. I don't think I got around to it. Even if I did, I'm going to read it again because it's such a good... It's so important. Good communication is essential for all healthy relationships. A person who grows up in a healthy family with parents who have a good relationship and who communicate like adults is extremely rare. They treat others with respect and won't tolerate disrespect. The more drama and dysfunctional behavior they witness and experience growing up is what they become emotionally anchored to expect and dish out themselves. You must set and enforce healthy boundaries with all people who you allow into your inner circle. This is how you create and maintain drama-free and effortless relationships. Never tolerate toxic people or those who take you for granted or you will attract even more of this behavior into your life it's easier said than done but it's it's harsh but sometimes you just got to do it because again why allow the drama into your life people have to make the same level of effort that you do that's what you're looking for 
You want somebody who's nice to you. You want friends that are nice to you. You want clients that are nice to you. You want people that work for you that are nice to you. And the women you date, you want women who are going to be nice to you and sweet and assume and give you the benefit of the doubt instead of flying off the handle and getting mad and displaying passive aggressive behavior and just causing unnecessary problems. Life's just too short. So let's go through the first guy's email. He says, hey, Corey, I just started your material. I'm the third time through your book, and I wanted your opinion on my recently ended relationship. I met a girl through Tinder a couple months ago, and we really hit it off fast. I was over at her place at her request almost half of every week. She was the kind of girl I thought liked to text every day. So I did text her basically all day, every day. And he puts mistake number one. Within three weeks, I got the let's just be friends speech. So obviously, you over-pursued, you called, you texted too much. Obviously, a younger guy thinking, hey, Corey, you don't understand us millennials. You know, we communicate a little differently. We use, we're on our mobile devices all the time. And my response to that is like, yeah, when I date women that are in their 20s, it's like, I don't have these problems. They typically tend to date women that have their shit together and have a career and they can pay their bills and that are easygoing, easy to get along with, and say what they mean and mean what they say, because I just don't tolerate any other kind of bullshit. But I see that comment a lot from guys going, no, you don't understand, Corey, you're 50, it's different. It's different for people my age. It's like, yeah, okay. Well, not the women that I that I meet. Obviously, the women I meet and date that are their age, it's like wouldn't give these guys the time of day because of their behavior. He says, I told her friends was hard and I'd have to think about it. Well, if you hear a woman referring to you with the F word, you're like, hey, I'm not interested in being friends. As soon as you hear that, that needs to come out of your mouth. Because anytime a woman uses the F word in relation to you, you're like, no, that's not going to work. I'm not even going to consider that. That would be a waste of my time. That's not what I'm looking for. You can say it with a smile on your face, obviously. But you got to set those healthy boundaries because if you're acting like a bitch, which obviously this guy was with over pursuing her and blowing up her phone and acting needy and insecure, part of the test is seeing will you be compliant with being stuck in the platonic friend zone. And if you agree to that, she'll lose even more respect for you because deep down she knows you don't want to just be friends. She's just testing you to see what you're made of. And most guys just go, oh, i got to think about it. It's a really hard, it's a really hard decision. Like, no, nah, I'm not interested in that at all. You need to delete that F word from the vocabulary in reference to us. The next day I told her I would start seeing other people soon if we were going to just be friends. Well, just that response shows that you're kind of agreeing to it. To which she freaked out and told me, just go see other bitches. <laughs> she sounds really immature. Getting butt hurt and upset. Yeah, just what I want to hear. I did the usual awful move of begging and then went no contact for seven days. She then reached out with a text, my cat just got run over. I said I was sorry it happened but didn't push anything. Well, as I discussed in Seven Principles Get an X Back, you should have said, oh, that sucks. Well, let's get together and you can tell me about it. Yeah, I liked your cat. You know, Let's get together and uh, catch up. Hang on, have fun and hook up. Create an opportunity for sex to happen. But instead, you just kind of danced in a circle. She texted me the next day, and I offered to meet. She declined and didn't provide a new day. So I told her to reach out when she was able to make some time. So far, so good. But you should have done that when she first reached out. And you'll do that only on two separate consecutive occasions when she reaches out first. She sent a couple Snapchats the next day, to which I kept the one, kept it light with just one message. The next message was a baby one of her dog getting off the chain and as he was kept outside. I left it on read and 30 minutes later. So if you read a message and the other person knows you've read it and then you just leave them on read, that's fucking rude. That's passive aggressive behavior. And people typically do that on purpose just to let the other person be left hanging and it's rude, but it happens. So don't do that. Don't read the message and then leave them hanging because you're inviting them to treat you the same way. And then she, her message was, you told me to reach out, but when I do, you just ignore me, so I guess this is it then. 
So it sounds like she's a little butthurt and upset over the whole thing. I told her I want to see her. I just don't want to be a texting buddy. She then flipped out saying we had to be texting buddies to learn each other again and said all all I wanted was to rush things and put a label on it, etc. So obviously just by that statement it tells me that your behavior was a lot worse than you let on in your email. You obviously overpursued, texted too much, called too much, tried to force her into a relationship, smothered her. And he says, I told her, I do not want any labels. I just want to see you and have fun again. She reblocked me, which is where I made my final mistake. So just getting pissed off and blocking you shows that, you know, if she had, a, if she was a normal girl, she was like, okay, I understand. Yeah, we can get together. She would make plans. But she responds with passive aggressive behavior. That's, that's disqualifying. I wouldn't put up with that. Just young and immaturity. That's what she learned in her family. You get mad at each other, you give each other the silent treatment until somebody caves. I dated women, a woman that was like that, and then after two, three years, I got fucking sick of it because it never really got any better. Even if it was good for several months, something would happen, she'd get mad, and she would just respond the same way without really even thinking about it just because... And she's still that way all, all these years later. She's still like that. So another reason why we don't talk very often... He says, I sent her a long text message. She had left my phone number unblocked, only the phone number, explaining how I wanted to try and work things out, but how I also don't like how she shuts down, won't communicate, and blocks me and says hurtful things. Well, it was good because you stood up for yourself. I told her I was unafraid to move on without her, but I was still willing to try. She told me to move on, but was very hurtful and said she hated our time together. Oh, yeah, I, I'd be, and, hey, yeah, let me get back in line for more of that. I hated my time with you. Oh, that's really going to win me over, sister. Yeah, I really want to go back out with you. He says, I'm back in no contact and blocked everywhere. She never properly communicated. Well, it doesn't sound like she's capable of that. But neither did I, and I did fall in love with her. Well, you fell in love with the fantasy of who you want her to be, dude, but she's kind of an ass. She's an ass, jackass. A jackass with a capital J. Do you think there's a chance she'll come back again? Ah, flip a coin. It could go either way, but notice what he says next. Or should I just forget her based on how she treats me? Ding, ding. We have a winner. I know I've made a lot of mistakes here too, but I can't ignore the way I was treated either. Now you're talking, dude. Now you're talking, Padawan. That's the way you you should have the attitude. Hey, she needs another chance with me. I mean, if you're a glutton for punishment and she eventually reaches out, invite her to your place, hang out, have fun, and hook up. Invite her over to make dinner. Don't go meet her out. Don't go pick her up. If she won't agree to, to get together in the evening at your place, then just follow exactly what I teach in Seven Principles, get an ex back. And leave it at that. But like I said, this girl... She's disqualified herself. I wouldn't waste my time with her. But if you're a glutton for punishment, you want to give her another chance, maybe the sex is really good or whatever, it's on you, bro. But in my case, I've got to take a sip from the glass of no drama allowed. You hear that? That's the sound of no drama in my life. So let's go to the second guy's email. He says, hey, Corey, longtime fan. Thank you for your solid advice. I have sent many men your way. I'm 27 and just got out of being engaged to a woman that I dated for nine years. I'm a cop in the Bay Area and the job is taking a huge toll on my dating life. Yeah, can you imagine being a police officer in this day and age? Hey, what do you do for a living? I'm a cop. Sure, that goes over like a lead balloon, especially if you got you live in a city. I mean, the Bay Area, Jesus Christ, all, all the leftists that live out there. I can just imagine. Oh, man. You probably have to keep that kind of on the down low. I work in security, private security. <laughs> I'm James Bond, babe. I could tell you what I do, but then I'd have to kill you. And you're kind of cute, and, you know, I'd like to get to know you a little better. I recently started dating again and found a girl who is also a cop. She's perfect. Easy. You don't know that. You just met her. This is where, oh, she's perfect. She's a police officer. Hey, she wins. This is the next future wife of mine. 
too perfect. She's me. We've been on two dates and we almost hooked up on the second date at her house. She gave me all the signs of being on the hook, calling me babe, telling me I'm perfect, wanting to kiss nonstop, etc. She made me coffee in her favorite coffee before work and I left my jacket at her house. But then the next three days, she did no contact to me. Well, if you'd been a really good student, I'm kind of suspect. I think you're kind of embellishing a little bit in your email. You're making yourself look a little better than, than your actions show because you don't sound like a guy that's really familiar with what I teach. He says, for the first time, I overpursued by texting and came off as needy. Yeah, if a girl just disappears on you for a couple of days, you just go back to once a week. One, one contact per week and see what happens. But if you blow her phone up after two days or three days because you're kind of, maybe you've been stuck in a pussy embargo because of the coronavirus and then the fact that not a lot of women are big fans of the fact that you're in law enforcement because obviously if you listen to the media, all people in law enforcement are just horrible, awful people, which is nuts. And by the way, I appreciate your service and the fact that you hold the line and keep us safe from these fucking animals in our society, especially these Antifa clowns and the, I'm just not going to get into, I'm not going to get into it in this video. Anyways, because she's a cop, she's a whole different ballpark for me. Well, that tells me you're putting her on a pedestal and kissing her ass and that doesn't work with any woman, dude. They want to be treated like a teammate and an equal. And you're blinding yourself to what she's really like because you're just assuming because she's a cop that she's in the club. Doesn't mean she's not a lunatic. When I set up a date, she told me that we weren't ready for a relationship. That tells me you were smothering her. I need a time to be alone and learn what I need. So I don't know if that she was saying that about you or saying that about herself. But what that statement tells me is that you're calling, you're texting too much, you're acting too dopey, you're acting like this is going to be you know, your next great long-term relationship. And she can feel that. So obviously she feels like she's losing her freedom. He says, I replied by telling her thanks, but I am not interested in being just friends. Give me a call when you change your mind. Drinks and a good time on me. Stay safe. No reply. It's been a week. She has my jacket and I have her coffee mug. Where do I go from here? Well, you have to be congruent with what you told her. You said, give me a call when you change your mind. You can't say that to a woman and then be not congruent with that. Because what she's basically, it sounds like she tried to friend zone you, but again, you're trying to make yourself look a little better. Than, you said you're a big fan of the work and that implies that you, and you sent lots of guys my way and that implies that you are really familiar with it. Maybe you've just been cherry picking videos and now you got a girl that you like you're just coming on glue. So the fact that it's been a week, I wouldn't do anything. Obviously, it sounds like as far as the jacket versus mug, I mean, depending on your jacket, maybe she got the better end of that that deal. But I wouldn't do anything. That's part of your problem. You're just like, where do, where do I go from here? You told her to get in touch when she changed her mind after trying to friend zone you. So even if you never hear from her again, you know, hey, you know, congratulations on the fact that you got a coffee mug out of it, supposedly her favorite coffee mug, and she got your jacket. I would just leave it at that. And because she may reach out in a week or two. And if you if she does, invite her over for drinks at your place to make dinner or go create create another date. Hang out, have fun, and hook up. Progress it. But you gotta you gotta read the book, man. You gotta read the fundamentals. Read three percent man. You can Again, you can read both my books at understandingrelationships.com, Mastering Yourself and 3% Man. All you got to do is subscribe to the email newsletter. You got to learn the fundamentals. You can't cherry pick. And that's what it looks like you've been doing is cherry picking. And so it's kind of become a train wreck. But I don't like the fact that she tried to stick you in friend zone and she's kind of ignoring you on top of that. But like I said, after reading your email, it looks like you kind of tried to make yourself look a lot better than... If I look at her actions, it sounds like you really acted needy and neurotic and, and made a negative impression on her. And that's, that's not good. So same thing I tell the first guy. Will you hear from her again? You could flip a coin. It could go either way. 
But I would just hang back and do nothing. Wait to hear from her if you do. Try to set up the next date. And if you don't, chalk it up to learning experience. Recognize that you'll need to learn the fundamentals in the book. And go from there and start dating other women. You, you can't be putting chicks on a pedestal just because you had two dates and you almost, you almost hooked up. You're just not going to get anywhere by behaving that way. So if you're in a challenging situation and your emotions have gotten the best of you and you're trying to figure out what to do with a cute girl or you're having some other kind of professional challenge in your life that you'd like to get my help with, go to understandrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon. <laughs>